and I will be a uh, facilitator for this particular panel. So this time I'm going to turn this over to our director. She will introduce herself and do an opening comment to get this thing kicked off. Let's do it. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jackie Patterson, and um, I bring greetings on behalf of the National Office of the NAACP and specifically the Environmental and Climate Justice Program. So first, I want to give thanks for, for being here today. Thanks for all of you for, for, for being interested in this issue and joining us. And also, thank you very much to Brother Lewis for facilitating and pulling this whole thing together in such a wonderful way. And to, of course, President Adora obi and Wazy for for um, really prioritizing this issue in such, an, such a significant way. So I look forward to having this conversation. So I just want to give a, a brief introduction to some of the environmental justice issues in Florida that, that I, I'm sure a number of you have encountered in different ways. And I'm hoping that, um, that Brother Lewis asked for people who might want to step forward and give testimony. I'm hoping that people will feel moved to give spontaneous testimony after we begin to bring out some of these issues that I know that you're probably encountering in your communities. And, and with you bringing up those examples, you don't have to feel like you have to present them very kind of elaborately, but just kind of talk about what's happening in your communities. We can have, really take advantage of this esteemed panel of great people who all bring different areas of expertise around this to really kind of talk about how we can actually address and resolve some of the issues that we're all facing in our communities. So um, because of doing such, um, exciting work with Brother Lewis and, and President Adora. I've had the privilege of, of learning a lot about what's happening in Florida, for better or worse. For better in terms of just the sheer resilience and the strength of the Florida communities and the various units of NAACP, and for worse in terms of the, the number of environmental justice issues that besiege the various communities here. So I'm just going to give an overview of some of those so you can have a sense of what we're going to be talking about a little bit. So, so one of the one of the issues that um, we worked on uh, quite a bit last year was the BP oil drilling disaster, and so that in and of itself is an issue that that obviously hit Florida in a way that you all all know about uh, very well in terms of just the uh, the attack on the environment itself, the impacts on um, on well um, e the economic status, the impacts on culture, the impacts on livelihood and so forth for the community. So that was huge. And one of the issues that it highlighted for us as we dealt with the myriad issues that resulted from it is the issue of disproportionate placement of landfills in communities. And I don't know how many of you in your different communities know of a landfill that's in your area or that's nearby. Can we have a show of hands or people who know of a landfill near your area? Okay. Yeah, that's a few. So unfortunately, um, after there, there's a report that came out by Dr. Bullard, who's kind of known as the godfather of uh, environmental justice, and it's called Toxic Waste and Race, and it talks about the disproportionate placement of waste in our communities, and particularly in communities of color. And with the BP oil drilling disaster, out of the nine landfills where they placed the, the oil waste from, those, from that disaster, some of which was hazardous, some, some of which wasn't, um, and there are various definitions of hazardous, which is a whole other issue in and of itself. But out of the nine landfills, six of them were in, com in communities that were disproportionately communities of color. And one of the, the communities that, or the landfill that received the most of the waste was right here in Florida, called the Spring Hill Landfill in Campbellton, Florida. And it received, I don't know, maybe 60% of the waste, I mean, and out of, which is a disproportionate amount of the waste itself. And it also happened to be in the community that had the most uh, people of color, I think 68% of the people surrounding that plant, I mean, that, um, that landfill were people of color, African Americans. So we actually um, went on a, we had some, a couple pictures of that, but we went on a trip and visited um, that landfill and we met with the communities to get a sense, did you know that this landfill was coming? Were you consulted about it? People had no idea, no one we spoke to had any idea that that waste was coming to that community. And that unfortunately happens all too often, just a lack of consultation. And, and we hear things that happen with landfills, whether it's uh, that the, um, some of the toxic stuff from the landfills leaches into the water supply, and, um, and then of course there's the air quality issues that come from, from landfills. And even when I was approaching that, that landfill, when I was coming to visit that time, before I got there, I smelled the landfill, you know, about a mile before I actually, uh, you know, arrived at the facility, I knew I was getting close, so. Um, 
So also some of the other issues that I hope will come up in this conversation are around incinerators, particularly there's an incinerator in Port St. Joe that is a struggle that hopefully Lee will touch on in her conversation because she, using the um, experience from her work with, um, with the incinerator situation in Valdosta, Georgia, has worked closely with Port St. Joe in, um, in Florida here. And that's been a wonderful kind of, um, uh, I guess uh, an example of kind of mentorship between branches in terms of a branch that's really overcome and, and had a triumph around their um, incinerator issue and a, a fledgling branch that's just trying to begin to deal with with their incinerator issue. And there's a number of incinerators in Florida. Gainesville, I think, was another. Tallahassee successfully fought off a landfill, a, I mean, I'm sorry, an incinerator a while back. So that's another issue. And we'll talk, I think we'll talk more about some of the health impacts of, of incinerators and why it's an important issue for us to be looking at. And again, these, these incinerators are disproportionately placed in our communities. Issues around coastal erosion and sea level rise are other environmental issues that we need to be looking at. And I think some of our other panelists might speak about that a little bit, so I won't talk more about, more, more about it. Um, also, as it relates to climate change, the, one of the impacts of climate change are the increase in the frequency and severity of extreme weather events. And we're all